Hey, what's up? I'm Allie and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I'm known a little bit for my bookshelves. I've done some critiquing bookshelves videos. I've talked about organizing my bookshelves. I've done some weird shit to my bookshelves. My bookshelves are my life and I change them out a lot. I do a lot of things. I'm also pretty big on things being organized being functional but also being aesthetically pleasing to look at. I feel like I've had a lot of people ask me for tips on how to decorate their shelves so here is a video just showing little snippets of things that I could think of. Before we get too far into the video I do want to thank today's sponsor which is Book of the Month. You will see as we get into this I am a very big fan of Book of the Month. I have quite the Book of the Month collection at this point. This is a monthly book subscription service that I adore because sometimes when life is chaotic and busy and there's just so many options out there, I just want to know where to get a good read. And the good thing about Book of the Month is that they've already selected something pretty much for anyone. Lots of different genres, great for mood readers like myself, and it's pretty much guaranteed to be a fantastic read. You go on there, you select your book, you can select add-ons. It's a great price for a hardcover book. I'm obsessed. Plus, I love just like looking forward to book mail every month. I normally have a several different selections to choose from. I ended up picking two for this month. One is Killers of a Certain Age. I think this one sounds so fun. This follows a group of women assassins who are in their 60s now and they've been sent by this organization to celebrate their retirement. And then they realize that this isn't a retirement party. This is their death. The organization has basically marked them for death. They are to die. So they have to band together and use their old school assassin skills in order to go against the organization that they used to work for. And I think this sounds so fun. The second one that I got is The Attic Child, and this does follow two different narrations. They are years apart, but they are connected. We follow a young boy in the 1900s who has been locked away in this attic. He is an unpaid servant to an English explorer, and that is the only time he is free is when he is in servitude. Now, we also look at this in the 1970s, and it is a girl is locked in this attic and comes across some of the things that this boy had left behind and gives her comfort in the moments that she is locked in this attic. All of this to uncover the secrets of this attic. And I think this sounds, it sounds a bit heart-wrenching, and I love a good book that will make me cry. What can I, I just, I really love a good cry. I really love the flexibility of book of the month, whether that's in their choices of new debut exciting authors, or if it's just when I need to skip a month at absolutely no charge, because sometimes life is just hectic. You know, it's just a bit crazy sometimes. So I have a code, you can use the code hardback quarter to get your first book for $9.99. And I will have a link to book of the month down below. Thank you again, book of the month for sponsoring this video. Now let's see how I take my book of the month collection and sort them. So I'm going to talk about uh, different ways to actually organize your books on your shelves. So of course some of these are going to be more of the classical ways of organizing them. Nothing here is like groundbreaking. I just thought it would be nice to have one place to kind of talk about a lot of the different ways to do this and the pros and cons to each method. So traditionally we have alphabetical order. Now you can do it alphabetical by author and this is great if you are someone who remembers the author. That person is not me but it might be you. And this tends to be the way that most stores and libraries are set up. You can also do it alphabetical by title if you are someone who is going to memorize titles more easily and make it more accessible to find such titles when you are looking for them. I do think a big part of organizing your shelves should be based around how you typically remember books and how you tend to be as a reader. Are you someone who is going to look for a specific author? Are you someone who's a mood reader? Are you someone who memorizes things by color. So I think that that goes into consideration anytime that you are organizing your shelves. I do think that the main cons to both of these systems is that it isn't always the most aesthetically pleasing to look at. However, it does make it really easy to find. It's really easy to organize. I also think that it's great because you can keep series together. 
for the most part. If you're more of a mood reader, you might be more enticed to organize by genre and you, depending on the space that you have, you could do each shelf is a specific genre that maybe like starts at contemporary, it ends in romance or romance into fantasy. If you are a romanticy reader, things like that. You're like me and you read a little bit of everything. You might have shelves that are full of mystery thrillers and horror along with smut, uh, along with nonfiction. So this really depends on the type of collection that you have. If you're someone who might only read one or two different genres, this might not be the most beneficial to you. But if you are a mood reader and read from a wide variety at all times, this might be a good fit. Plus side to this is that you can keep your series together. I will say the downfall is that depending on the genre that you are picking and where are you are placing those books that this can we call like a color blocking issue. If you have a lot of contemporaries, a lot of those tend to be really bright covers and spines. Whereas if you also read a lot of fantasy, a lot of those tend to be really dark. So if you are de dedicating certain parts of your shelf, you might get the issue where you have like a really bright spot and then below it, it's like a really dark spot and then just like a mismatch of colors. So is it always the most lovely to look like? No, I think it really does depend on how you are dedicating and moving those shelves to fit in. There's also age group. Now, I don't have an example of this because I honestly don't own a lot of middle grade. I love to read middle grade, but it isn't something that I typically tend to own. This would be really great if you are someone who does read from a variety of different age groups, but also for families as well, especially if you're putting more of your younger audience target audience books at the bottom of the shelves so they're more accessible to children and then working your way up. A lot of the times like middle grade books are made pretty cohesive in size. The downfall is that like if you are really mixing like picture books and adult books and things like that that it can look a little bit odd on the shelves together so it would also depend on how you would want to sort them within the shelves. I think picture books look great when you can put them in a basket and be able to like rifle through them. Is that the word I'm looking for? If you can put them like that and have them on a bottom shelf, I do think that that looks a little bit better than lining them up because picture books are so awkward. They are just so incredibly awkward. For what reason? I don't know. There's just no standard size for them. So if you can find a system like that. We have one of my personal favorites and that is by color. I am such a sucker for a rainbow bookshelf and I have two reasons for why. I just think rainbow bookshelves are, are timeless. One, my brain remembers colors before anything. More of a photographic memory. So when I am thinking of a specific book, I tend to have the color of the cover in mind. So it makes it much easier for me to find things by color. I think that these also just look amazing. Who doesn't find just a rainbow? pleasant to look at. It just makes me happy. I walk into a room and I'm like, oh my god, yes, thank you. Mm, beautiful. Every time I come across a rainbow shelf. I think the, the fun thing about rainbow shelves too is that they don't have to follow a specific guideline. Like you could do, it starts from white and continues down the shelves into black or whatever. Or you can do it so the rainbow just goes straight across in a way. It's not like a, a line that goes from top to bottom. It's more of side to side. Um, you can also make your own rainbow, your own different gradients. So however it fits your needs. Sometimes I like to take red into pink into purple and then into blue and do it a little bit backwards. Sometimes I like to do more of a, like a sunset look. So I think it really just depends on your taste, how many books you have, because the thing is with the rainbow shelves, you do tend to have a, need to have a bigger collection in order to fit those in. If you're really skimping out on a certain color, sometimes you can take off the dust jackets, store the dust jackets somewhere in a basket, in storage, wherever you need to, in a binder, and fill in some of those empty spots. This also can depend on the genre. Again, some genres just have darker colors involved with the covers, so it might be a little bit harder to fill in rainbow shelves. I think two by color, um, one that I've seen that I think is fascinating, I think it would be a big commitment, is a black and white theme, whether that's you do one row white, one row black, one row white, one row black, or if you do a bit of a piano style where it's 
one white book, one black book, one white book, one black book. And like whether that's turning the books around to achieve that or just having specific ones to do or whether that's covering them. Another thing with the color scheme is sometimes if the color scheme isn't working out, cover them with paper, which is what I did. That's a lot of mine. A lot of mine are covered in paper and this is for a multitude of reasons that I have done them for, but that's just mostly for the aesthetic, if we're being honest. Especially if you have a specific color scheme, like I do, within a room, and you want to stay within that. So there are different ways to really make a colorful or color lacking shelf work for you. Which leads me to the backwards. I know that this is probably the most hated way of organizing, and I have to say it is one of my favorites to look at. I love looking at pages. I love it. Um, so turning books backwards, I know is a bit, a bit of a choice, but it is one of my favorites. I think it's great because the color scheme, it tends to work with pretty much any, any room that you're going to put it in and you can decorate them however you want. You can change it out with the seasons, whatever you need to do. I just think that it looks fantastic. I organize in a way that my red books are turned backwards so that I can physically see how many books I need to read and how many are read at any given time of looking on my shelves. So that is, it backwards doesn't have to be all of them. How do you find your books when your books are backwards? That's when you can implement another one of the organizing systems, whether that's alphabetical, whether that's by genre, whatever you need to do in order to be able to find those books. Real readers know their shelves. I always think this argument is so weird because real readers know their shelves. They know where to find things. They have a system they're going to know. And then the last system for organizing that I really have is by height. And I have to say, this is probably by far the most aesthetically pleasing organization to do. I think something about it just looks so crisp, so clean, so or it's just so organized, like overly organized. I love it. I love a good height organization. And I think that this is pretty doable with any size collection, depending on what the shelves that you want to put them on, things like that. Um, you can also tend to get around the fact that I know there's books that in a series, for whatever reason, they make the third one a different size than the others. And there are ways around that, especially if you are finding that you can't fill out a full shelf with a certain size. This is easier with hardback books than it is paperbacks, unfortunately. So if you're a big paperback person, it might not work as well, but you can tend to stack books up to the height at the end or in the middle or whatever. You can tend to stack books that aren't that height up to the height of those books so it still keeps it a nice crisp clean line. And I just think that this looks amazing. It's great because you can normally keep your series together. Things like that. It looks so beautiful. So then we have kind of ways to make your shelves more interesting to add a, a little bit more dynamic to the shelves. And we have what I call a bit of the like display shelves. So one of these display systems is what I like to consider the bookstore display system, which is where you display certain titles, whether these are your favorite titles or your favorite covers or whatever. But basically every so many books you display a title out. This is especially great if you don't have a massive collection or if you have books that you have multiple copies of that are taking too much room, you can hide those behind. So I think this looks great. I love highlighting covers that are just gorgeous and really stand out, things that I really love. So I do really like this look. On top of that, I know a lot of people love knickknacks. Me, I love them. I love knickknacks especially. And I think the thing when keeping in mind when you're adding knickknacks onto shelves, the rule that I like to stick to is three. Groups of three when you are displaying them in areas. So you tend to want something that is a tall item, a medium item, and a small item and kind of group them in a way that showcases that. If you are a Funko user, that's a little different because I know you Funko users. You got a lot of, you got a lot of Funkos. And I think the best ways to really display Funkos is one, try to keep them, if you are using rainbow shelves, keep your Funkos within that color scheme. If they match a certain color, put them in that area. 
if you have a lot of them and they're part of like a series, like you have a way to display them with a series that you also own, I like to do setting a stage for these Funkos, which is where you stack certain books. Maybe you have one in the background to create a background and you kind of display several of those Funkos layered on top of those. Not explaining that right within talking, but hopefully I can show you what I mean. I think too, just spacing them out equally, if you have a lot of them, spacing them out on the shelf also looks much better than when they're like kind of random and grouped all over the place. Just really having a space, it really makes it seem organized, like they're really in their spot. And if you have a ton and ton and ton of knickknacks to display, take some off. Honestly, switch them out with the seasons, which is the best thing that I can offer. Maybe have a basket nearby or a box, whatever, to swap out things with the season. Not only will this just be better because then it reminds you that, you know, you have to actually dust your bookshelves. I know it's awful. It's a terrible thing. Why do they need dusted? Awful. But it also keeps your bookshelves fresh when you have to switch out things. It makes you excited to look at them more because a lot of times when something has been the same for a while, you will glance over it. So by kind of swapping out different things and different items that you are displaying, it really keeps it fresh and new for you to look at. I'd also say you can use boxes on your bookshelves in order to hide some of those trinkets and swap them out as well, which tends to be something that I do as well. All right, let's talk about some of the issues that come along with staging bookshelves for yourself. So what happens when you don't have mini books? Um, when you're having a hard time filling out spaces, I would say go with more of a display method put out those covers. Whether you have like two books in between, whatever, display those covers. Really make sure that your shelves look like they're being filled out. Um, I would avoid stacking if you can because stacking does condense your shelves a little bit more. So really figure out displays. It's okay to have some empty space as long as you are kind of drawing the eye to different areas. So if you don't have a lot of books, find some trinkets find some display items, find some artwork to fill that space with. What happens when you have too many books? Um, get rid of them. No, <laughs> I say that as someone who has a really hard time getting rid of books. If you have too many, there are a few different ways. One, stacking. Stacking is gonna be your best friend. And the main advice I can give when you are stacking is don't stack on top of each other on different shelves to make it look like one big column that continues through the shelves. Definitely stagger. I like to do like one in the middle at the top, maybe one to the right, one to the left. Just stagger them in a way um, so that it doesn't look like they're heavy. There's heavy stackage on one side of your shelf versus the other. My shelves aren't going to be the best example of this. My shelves are custom. I didn't want them to be deep shelves. Most of your standard bookshelves are deep. So double stacking is also your friend. Maybe you put books that you read behind. Maybe they are seasonal books. Maybe they're books that like you want to read, but you know you're not get a, gonna get around to for a while. Sometimes you gotta double stack. And the thing is, they don't have to stay back there forever. They don't have to live back there forever. They can be things that you swap out every so often that you remind yourself maybe this, this week we're gonna switch to this shelf type deal. They don't have to stay like that forever. Another thing is if you can manage to do a display method and fit multiple books behind a display. I'm big on buying multiple copies of the same book. I know you all have that problem too, but a lot of times, even if it's a series, I will put the first series facing out and put the rest of the series behind it because they don't need to take up room on the rest of the shelf. I only really need to know where that series is. So that's one thing. Also, if you have multiple editions of something, you can put it behind there. If they're books that are a similar genre, maybe you have smaller amounts of, put them back there. Again, you can swap out which one you are displaying with seasons or whatever. So it doesn't have to stay that way. Sometimes I like to put baskets like beside or in front or just nearby my shelves that I put books up. Now mine are for books that I'm going to eventually get rid of 
or if you have a TBR cart, putting books on there that you know you want to get to. So sometimes it's about creating another space that isn't necessarily a bookshelf to put books. I think baskets are great because they can hide things. Maybe they're their really ugly covers. Maybe they're books that you already read. Maybe it's your TBR. I don't know, but baskets sitting nearby in a corner of the shelves, beside the shelves, on the bottom of the shelves, sometimes that is a way to hide a lot of books at once. I do think the key to when you have a lot of books is to really find an aesthetic system. If you have a lot of books, I would say go more with a color scheme because it's going to look more cohesive in the long run versus having just alphabetical where it might be a mash. The way to make a lot of books aesthetically pleasing is to really have an, a, an organized system, whether that's by height or if that's by color, in a way that looks pleasing as well. The question that was about what do you do when you have multiple when you have books in different languages and I think honestly that's up to you. Do you want to keep them together? Do you want to do you want to organize by genre? Maybe they'll just fit into the genre. Do you want to organize by color? I do think that that is totally a choice. How where do you want to find those things? Also if you have graphic novels baskets are also great for that. Like more of a hard basket that you could flip through them because sometimes those are an awkward shape they're weird to put on your shelves and having a basket that kind of feels like they separate them can be a little bit better. Okay, now let's talk about some just little tips, tricks, whatever. I think the most important thing to note when you are organizing your bookshelves is which shelves to fill first. Eye level is going to want to be the shelf you put the most effort into. So the eye level one needs to be the one that looks the most beautiful, whether you want to showcase a fandom series there, whether you have a beautiful rainbow you want to put there, whether whatever it is, your most prized trinkets go there. The one that is at eye level needs to be the most aesthetically pleasing. Then the one below it is going to be the second most important. Those two are the most important. Your least important ones are the top and the bottom. The very top, I tend to put some of my nostalgia reads. Now, these are ones that I'm not really going to pull from often. I want to keep, but they're not really something that I need to touch a lot. They're just things that I can look up there and be like, oh yeah, I read that once. Bottom, I actually use for some of my bigger fandoms, I use for baskets that carry and hold some of my, my notebooks or some of my smaller series things like that. So I have baskets along the bottom, but they're also just like weird books. Like whether it's a weird shape, whether they're a weird color, things that I feel like don't fit in on any of the other shelves. So the bottom shelf is like your least important. That's where you can fit some of those extra organization items if needed. I would also say if you have fandoms that don't quite fill a shelf, I would put them on the top or the bottom. I know we want to showcase them, but sometimes they can really ruin the groove of an organization because they can take up a big chunk. Because sometimes they're all the same height, but nothing else is. Sometimes they're all the same color and nothing else is. So they do tend to be a sort of, if you have series, top or bottom, honestly. Give them their own spotlight so they don't distract from the rest of the organization. Another tip, again, if, if it doesn't fit your color scheme, do something about it. I've spent $4 and I've managed to cover an upwards of 700 of my books and I still have a lot more to cover. Red versus unread. Um, this is, again, I think this is something that if you are someone who is more of like a reviewer, if you're someone who is going to be really pulling from the books that you read versus you don't, um, if that's something that is important to you, you can either have shelves that are dedicated specifically for read books and unread books. You can have a cart that is specified for those things. Um, like I said, I like to do the organization and if I've read it, I turn it around because the chances are I'm not really going to be looking for it anytime soon. If it's for a video or something, I tend to know where it's at because my books are alphabetical by title. So I tend to know where it's at. I think my biggest tip when it comes to creating a bookshelf that you love is taking your time. It doesn't have to be done in a day. I know so many of us are like, I'm going to reorganize my bookshelves today and we want to do it in one day. It doesn't have to be that way. I would honestly take your time, 
move things around, try different methods, live with something for a little while, whether that's just putting the books on a few shelves and seeing if you like it and just living with it for a week or so and seeing if that's something that you're going to enjoy. Just really test things out. I love swapping things out with each season. I love trying new things on my shelves. I would also say if you don't love the way your shelves are looking, paint them. Paint them, cover them with contact paper, give them a bit of a makeover. Sometimes we just get used to what we're looking at and it isn't something that always pleases us. Also, if you find that you end up loving the way a shelf looks and you don't like the other ones, move it to that eye level spot because it will make the rest of the shelves look good. If you have space to add plants, I would, whether they're fake or real, I don't care. You have to live with it, not me. If they're fake or real, I do think that adding plants just makes it look more lived in. It makes it look more cozy. So if you have the ability to add plants, whether that's on top of the shelf or if it's in a random empty spot, do it. I think I move my shelves around almost every other month at this point. I'm never fully going to be happy because I'm constantly pulling books in. There's constantly shifting that needs to be done, moving around that needs to be done. Sometimes I have to purge some of the books off of it because I've just realized that I'm at capacity. Anyway, those are just some of the ways that I feel like you can organize your shelves. I'm sure there are plenty of others out there. I'm sure that you have found a way that you love. So let me know down below which way is your favorite to organize, which way you would love to see see done. Um, let me know if there's any tips or tricks that I missed or any questions that you might have that I might be able to answer in some way. I'm not an interior designer. I'm just someone who does this for fun. Um, a lot of people hate my shelves and that's fine. The thing about having your shelves is totally up to you and it is how you perceive them and if you love them that is all that matters. If they work for you that is amazing. I hope that you have liked this video. Thanks again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Again, there is a link and a code down below if you are interested. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!